possibly severe Bit thunderstorms, now, maybe even some hail. BP Ultimate Pit Lane open now for the first of two back-to-back -back armor all qualifying sessions. Short and sharp and simple. So 10 minutes the journey, and at the end, we wave the flag and we will determine who sits on the armor all pole. There's no complexity in this process whatsoever. And then there's a brief break and we do it again because uh, we've got a couple of races to deal with under lights this evening. And that raises another very interesting topic. What will it be like guiding one of these cars around here with 650 odd horsepower on a wet and greasy racetrack? I thought I'd just do a quick double check to make sure everyone was on wet weather tyres, Neil, but there is one car that has left pit lane with a set of soft tyre slicks on. Todd Hazelwood is the only man to brave these conditions. It's raining heavier in the lane right now. I'd expect we'll see him in pit lane in about a minute and a half. <laughs> yeah. I don't reckon he'll be out there for too long, given the circumstances. Thanks for the update, Garth. Simple rule of thumb when it comes to determining how wet the track is and what tyre you need to be on, look for the plume. So if you see that spray behind the race car, it's generally wet enough for some wet tyres, and that is Todd Hazelwood. He's trying to actually grind some heat into that front tyre at Turn 5 by putting a lot of lock on. He's put it in a lower gear and gassed it up and trying to bag up the rears. But I think, unfortunately, what's going on above him is going to overcome what's happening below him. This is for qualifying. We will determine an armour or pole. They're playing for keeps. And the more you can press onward at the moment, the better you'll be. And people will press on. They want as much warmth in those tyres as they can. Anton's gone to the top. Remember, he had three consecutive armour or poles last weekend. 41.5 is the number. Now, that plays the sort of race speed we saw last night was in the 31. So, oh, and off the road. Cam Waters, well off the road, and it rotates. And he'd be battling not to... Lucky that gravel trap is there. Now, if that triggers a red flag, then he'll be effectively sin bin. As it looks like he might get out. Sometimes when it's wet, you can get a little bit of grip. We'll try to rock it. Spoken too soon here. Try to, try to rock it. That's close to coming out. Red flag. Uh, oh, they've red flagged it. So, so that'll be an interesting one that'll get talked about because the expectation would have been that he was not going to be able uh, not to working, get out of it. Uh, they have but, called a red flag, though. They have called a red flag. So the alternate lines being used on the outside of the track. So you, if you're a keen follower, you'll see that the cars are far wider at every corner, pretty much. And there's differing surfaces around this place. The old surface has really big aggregate, big stones within the bitumen. And it's been worn since the place opened since 1990. Then there's some other areas that have been resurfaced, and that's the shiny, polished finish that you can see. And the drivers have got to cope with the varying demands and the varying grip levels of each corner. Seconds. 30 seconds remain, Armour All qualifying. Race number 24 coming up under lights this evening at Sydney Motorsport Park. The racetrack is drenched, and at the moment, Anton Di Pasquale, who's done a remarkable job in the last couple of weekends pace-wise, has the primary position. Can he hang on to it? Now, if there's enough warmth in tyres and enough respite from the rain, somebody might be able to improve. There are personal bests going on out there at the moment. Anton's got a half-second margin as he crosses the control line. Will got by. I think Will got by. He'll get another lap. So he's the only one. So anybody that was positioned in a way that they could actually squeeze a little bit more time on that racetrack, if there are some grooves in it, and it does dry a fraction, You'll get a gain from it. At the moment, it's Deepa Squally from Van Gisbergen and then Mostert. Fullwood's done a great job. Davison's up there in fifth. Courtney's sixth, and that partially answers my rhetorical question before about whether it's improved. Pye, who did a mighty job last night, came from 22nd to 9th. He's sitting in seventh. And then Heimgartner, Jamie Wincup and Will Brown, who had the armour all pole last night, had a career best for him in supercar competition. So they're all receiving the chequered flag still misty misty scenes out there at the moment and car number 17 mark identified is at turn six at the moment maybe there's some speed left for will davison just have a look at his splits because in the first split he's now he's a second away on that first split so those conditions are still a little worse and maybe he's backed it off 
He looks like he's backed it off on the way out of turn eight there now. But I, I thought he got by the start-finish line, but it will be very much dependent upon what he had for tyre quality, and he has definitely backed it off. Have a look how difficult it is to see out of the cars. They're travelling at incredibly high speed. They have sometimes up to five layers of tear-offs on the polycarbonate screen. There is a silicon compound that helps the water beating. You've got the big single-sweep wiper going from side to side. They use anti-fog wipes on the inside for the driver, but you can see on the passenger side, the viz is shocking. What was that lap time, by the way? Uh, 43.4, so he's three and a half, four-tenths slower than he's best. That's the story. Anton Di Pasquale for the second race in the sequence of three this weekend. We'll start from the pole position. It was heartbreaking for him last night. The problem with the gearbox from that car, and that builds on the triple treat of pole positions for him last weekend. Fantastic performance, and he moves his tally on this season to eight armor or pole. So well done, Anton. And that's a nice way to respond. And it sets up an amazing battle in that first race this evening because he'll start off the front row of the group with Shane Van Gisbergen and a big, big improvement for the mobile cars for Chas Mostert and for Bryce Fullwood. They'll be out of row number two in positions three and four.